All right, so the world used to have a problem. And the problem was measuring things. There was no sort of standardized way to create measurements. For example, if you go back in time to, I don't know, maybe the 15, 1600s, kings would measure things by the length of their foot. And if the length of the king's foot was so long, then everyone in that country would say a foot is the king's foot. Now, that inherently isn't bad. Just the problem is when the king dies, you get another king and the foot might be a different length. Or you might go to a different country and the foot is a different measurement. So let's say the king of France and the king of Britain have different size feet. The measurement of a foot doesn't carry over from one country to the next. And that could be a huge problem if you're trying to do some sort of trade. You're trading fabric and you say you want three feet of fabric from a French guy and you're a British guy. Well, there might be some tension there because you might not get as much fabric as what you want. Anyway, this was a big problem and not just in Europe, but all over the world. You see Egypt might have one way of making measurements and China might have another and Argentina might have another. But around the late 1700s, a group of scientists got together and said, look, if we're going to be working together on all these scientific discoveries that we're working on, we have to standardize the units of our measurements. And like I told you in my last video, a lot of the stuff that you start learning in physics is really just length, mass, and time, or some sort of combination of two, or maybe even all three. And so I want to talk to you about length, mass, and time today. So there's all sorts of different ways to measure length, for example. Here in America, we don't use this international system that I was talking about. Here in America, we use the measurements of feet, like the king's foot. We still do that, except like we're not adjusting the length of the foot anymore. The foot is standard length. Anyway, we would use feet. We might also measure things in inches. Smaller things would be measured in inches. And long distances would be measured in miles. Now, this is fine. This is what I grew up with my whole life, but the rest of the world doesn't do this. The rest of the world took on that international system of measurements that scientists decided to use, you know, a long time ago. So this international system of measurements for length is based off of the meter. If you were to measure something smaller, you're usually going to use maybe millimeters. And if you're going to measure a long distance, you would measure it in kilometers. But for length, the base SI unit is the meter. So I'm going to put a little SI there for it. And for mass, generally what mass is, is how much stuff something is made of, how many molecules and atoms are just kind of crammed together. So one way to measure mass, and you've probably never heard of this before, is to measure it by slugs or the slug. Now, no one that I know of actually uses that. But I do want to clear something up real quick while we're here talking about mass. A lot of people assume that weight is another way to measure mass. And that's not exactly true. Technically, that's wrong. Weight is actually a force, not a mass. And there's whole lessons about that in the future in physics. But in the SI system of measurements, mass is based off of the gram. And if you were to measure something very small, you might use milligrams. And if you were to measure something kind of heavier, you would measure it in kilograms. Now, the SI unit for mass is not the gram. It's actually the kilogram. So that's the international system standard measurement for mass is the kilogram. And time is something that's kind of its own thing. It's kind of strange, honestly. You got the second. And then if you take 60 seconds, you got the minute. And then if you take, you know, 60 minutes, you got the hour. 24 hours, you got a day. You know, seven days, you got a week. You know, 28 days, 29 days, 30 days, 31 days, you'll have a month. 12 months gives you a year, 10 years gives you a decade. You, you get the point. There's a lot of different ways to measure time. But the SI units of measurement for time is based around the second. So you might have a millisecond, you might have a kilosecond. Now there's an actual benefit to using meters, grams, and seconds for all of our measurements. 
and also using this SI system unit of measurements. And that benefit is that it's very easy to convert between units. And let me show you what I mean by that. So we just talked about all the different SI units. And those units are the meter for length. It is the kilogram for mass. And it is the second for time. Now, your base units are different than your SI units. Your base units are what the SI system is based around. So your base units are very similar to the SI units. It's still the meter, but it's the gram and the second. So really only the kilogram and gram are different. So let's break down this prefix of the word kilo. The word kilo really just means a thousand. So if you were going to say a kilometer, you might say it kilometer. No one says it that way though. You say kilometer. What that is, is 1,000 meters. And we have all sorts of different prefixes that we use with this SI unit of measurement. You have the hecto, you have the deca, and you have your base units. And then if you're going to go smaller than your base units, you might have the deci, the centi, and the milli. And these prefixes actually go beyond just what I'm showing you, but I'm just going to show you this for right now. Now, hecto means 100. So if you were to say you had a hectometer, that means you have 100 meters. In deca, the prefix is 10. So if you had a decameter, that means you have 10 meters. And for the purpose of this example, the base unit is just the meter. Now it could be the uh, gram or it could be the second, but you know, for this example, we're just sticking with meter. Now deci, centi, and milli are a little bit different than kilo, hecto, and deca. You can see that kilo is at a thousand Right there, that's a thousand. Then hecto, you lose a zero and it goes down to a hundred. And then deca goes down to 10. Well, deci means one tenth. And centi means one one hundredth. And milli, you guessed it, one one thousandth. So if you had a deci meter, that means you had 0 0.1 meters. And if you had a centimeter, that means you had 0 0.01 meters or one tenth of a meter, or sorry, one one hundredth of a meter. And if you had a millimeter, that means you had 0 0.001 meters. So you can see as you go from deca, hecto, kilo, you're going up by multiplying it by 10. And as you go from deci, centi to milli, you're dividing by 10. So you have one tenth or one one hundredth or one one thousandth. Now to represent these with scientific notation, which is extremely useful, especially when you get to really, really large numbers. And I'm going to show you some of those in a minute. So the decameter is like saying times 10 to the first power. That's the scientific notation for deca. And hecto is times 10 to the second power, which is 10 to the second power is 100. And then kilo is times 10 to the third power. And times 10 to the third power is 1,000. Now, likewise, as you go down to deci, centi, milli, you have scientific notation there as well. And deci is like saying times 10 to the negative 1. Centi is like saying times 10 to the negative 2. And milli is like saying 10 to the negative third. So when you start dealing with scientific notation and you start seeing times 10 to the second, times 10 to the third, times 10 to the negative second, you know that they're talking about the scientific notation that represents your prefixes in the SI units of measurement. Now you can use these in, you know, times 10 to the second feet if you wanted, but no one really does that. Anyway, like I said, the kilo, hecto, deca, these prefixes, they go farther beyond just kilo to milli. They get way bigger than kilo and they get way smaller than milli. Let me show you those. 
So right here along this line right here, this line represents the base unit. That's where your meters, your seconds, and your grams sit. So you can see we have our deca, hecto, and kilo, but you can also see it goes way beyond that. The next thing up is mega, which is times 10 to the sixth. And you can see that that is really 1 million. And the next one up, giga, maybe you've heard of gigabytes. That is, what is that? That's a billion times 10 to the ninth. Then you got tera, maybe you've heard of terabytes times 10 to the 12th. That's a trillion. And then you can even go bigger to Petra times 10 to the 15th. I don't even know what that number is. And X uh, 10 to the 18th. Heck, I don't even know what that number is either. And you see how big those numbers are. Instead of having to write all those zeros or whatever numbers might be in there, you can just write times 10 to the 18th. But let's go backwards now. Let's go really small. So we have our deci, centi, milli. But if you go down even further, there's micro. And it's represented with this Greek letter right here. It's called mu. It's really a combination of the letter M and the letter U. Mu, whatever. Anyway, you can see how small that number is. And then we even have smaller nano, then even smaller than that, pico, then femto, ado. These prefixes can get really, really big and really, really small. Typically, we're going to stick between the kilo and the milli section of this. So somewhere around right there. But it is possible to go beyond that. Now, rarely in physics do any of our length, mass, and times stand alone. What I mean by that is a lot of times we combine them mathematically. And when we combine these units mathematically, it's called dimensional analysis. And that's what I'm going to be talking to you about in the next video.